Well hello and welcome back into Satisfactory. Today we're going to look a little bit at some space elevator parts. Now we already covered some of it but I wanted to put together in a little concise little uh, structured video just some tips on how you can produce the space elevator parts for the uh, second stage. So as you can see uh, they want us to complete phase two in the upper right corner. And there you can see it requires 500 smart plates, um, 500 versatile frameworks and 100 um, automated wiring. And as, is, as you can see here, if we go into this little um, assembler, we can see we have smart plates and you need one reinforced iron plate and one rotor to make one smart plate. So two per minute for each. If you want to make versatile framework, you need 2.5 modular frames per minute and 30 steel beams per minute. And that sounds like a lot and it is some. And you will get five per minute if you do that. So for example, if we have one machine doing this, we get two per minute. And uh, if we just do some quick calculations, basically, if you have, uh, you need to get 500 and each minute you get two. And basically, if we have uh, 250 divided by 60, well, then we get uh, basically up to four hours it should take to get those. So it's a little bit interesting like this. You can see that it will take time to produce some, but you don't need to like overproduce stuff. Especially in like early game here to get this versatile framework we need fire per minute and you know we're going to do some other projects too we don't necessarily even need to run this at full speed. We can however but we can adapt this to the production we have. So my recommendation is that for smart plating you should set up a dedicated smart plating factory that makes as much as possible because the smart plating is a great thing to put into the sink. Uh, it's not so hard to manufacture and if you just over uh, make a big production doing smart platings um, and then you can sync the rest of it. So it can be pretty handy too. Uh, for versatile framework it steals a lot of steel <laughs> and that might be a little bit difficult to get a lot of. So my recommendation wouldn't to be overproduce this. They can be pretty slow. You can tune it down a little bit later. I'm going to show you this in this episode here. Now, to make automated wiring, there is a super handy trick which you can utilize when you make a factory that produces motors. And this is something we went through in our, the last video. But basically, it requires 2.5 stators per minute and uh, 50 cables. So, I think we should, uh, we should look at them here. This is the closest one, so we should actually look at the automated, automated uh, wiring facility first. So let us walk in here. Uh, in this facility we are making engines and a byproduct of this engine uh, production is actually this. Uh, let's see if it comes... there we have it. Okay, we run here. You can see there, the automated wiring. <laughs> oh no, we're stuck on the belt. Well, in any case, we have a byproduct of automated wiring. Here you can see they come out here and it's super handy. So, uh, how did we set that up? Well, it turns out we can get a perfect harmony. If we use this machine, this uh, is making our engines. You can see it requires two rotors and two stators. Well, that's all nice and balanced. That means that we have two machines making rotors at 100%. So they get, of course, four per minute and that means eight per minute. So we get eight per minute in terms of rotors and eight per minute in terms of stators. So if we go over to the stator area, then you can see here that we are making five stators per minute. All right, not four. So we make four rotors per minute, but we make five stators per minute. And this is of course not balanced. So actually, what we could do is to underclock this and make sure it makes uh, four per minute, like this. 
And now you can see it uses 12 steel pipes and 32 wires and it's all weird like that. Well, we don't do that. So basically, with these two machines combined, we have an overproduction of two stators per minute. My recommendation for your engine factory, or motor factory I mean, is that you have two machines making stators at 100% and two machines making rotors at 100% then there will be a little bit of an overflow. We will overproduce some of them. So now they haven't been stacking up on the line here because I'm actually leaching off a little bit into a box because I want some in a box too and it's just been starting to running. But if this has uh, not had a box here that stands and collect this, then we would actually have this line that goes to this machine should actually be full. Uh, because we don't require so uh, many of these. So if we go down here, we use this overproduction and we underclock the automated wiring facility. So here we have automated wiring underclock to 80%. And now you can see it requires exactly two stators per minute. And when we require two stators per minute, of course, two stators plus the eight stators we need for the engines uh, amounts to 10, which is exactly how much these two uh, produce together. So in conclusion, by just having the two stators running at 100%, leaching off uh, two per minute to another facility, we can easily solve the automated wiring facility without having um, a dedicated facility for this. Very handy. Uh, and this little area, of course, now it's going to be efficient until this box is full. But when this box is full, it should be all right. So that's kind of smart like that. And I haven't been playing for so long. And you can see already uh, we actually have the 100 uh, automated wiring we were requiring. So that's pretty nice. Right. I think we should uh, do a little traveling and go to the smart plating facility because we have a dedicated smart plating facility right here and this is a dedicated episode which we have been looking at uh, earlier so if you want to see how i made this factory for making making smart plating only you can take a little better look at that video but what we basically are doing we have um, we actually uh, adapted this output perfect. It's a, it's a Mark 1 miner. Here we can see 30, 60, 90, and uh, yeah, 93.6. It's a little bit weird like that, but that's only because we are cast. We're using the alternate recipe to cast screws. You don't have to do that, but we have a, a, a little tutorial on how to make screws earlier on. But basically, they're divided up, they're all in harmony, and we produce so much more than we actually need. You can see that one is underclocked to match this, and we make two, two here and two here, so four smart plating per minute. You can see it's a pretty formidable little setup, and it even looks very nice. And as you might imagine, we um, overproduce those smart platings, so they are, of course, coming down here you can see that there it went they're coming down here into the sink here the smart plates that get sink, sunken uh, and I also make sure that I collect a box of my smart plating here so I have a full box of smart plating um, if we need to use the smart plating to combine with some other parts for uh, future stages of the space elevator no spoilers but you know um, a lot of the times you need to combine a uh, more simple part with more advanced part. So it's always a good practice to stock stock up on your stuff. So there we have that. That's the, that's the smart plating here. And the only thing we are not producing right now is actually our uh, uh, versatile framework, they are called. So now let's check this as you can see here here is that uh, here is our um, well complete advanced iron parts facility 
and we are making 2.5 per minute of this. All right, so we know that we have 2.5 per, per minute and we can use these in order to produce a uh, diverse style framework. Now, uh, we should of course underclock it a tiny little bit so that we do not uh, empty our container. We want to make sure that the production is a little higher than consumption. Uh, here, handily enough, I have prepared a assembler that will produce the versatile framework. As you can see here, it's just this one, versatile framework, and it exactly requires 2.5 per minute. <clears throat> so that's nice. Uh, now, I would actually underclock this a tiny bit just to make sure that we are producing, I don't know, 0.5 per minute, so we at least produce enough to actually fill up our container. Now it's down to 80% so it be, will be a little bit slower but we will still get four versatile frameworks per minute so we don't need to um, we don't need to play around too long. So we need 500 per minute uh, we get four. So 500 divided by four then we have 125 and that's basically like that. So divided by 60 it's, it's only two hours. We're gonna get full in like two hours. Uh, and you don't, of course, you need some steel, but you should have some steel at your home base anyways. And you can see here with this setup, we would require 24 steel beams uh, per minute. And if you do not produce enough steel beams per minute, well, then you can underclock it even more so that you don't like um, overextend your facility. Now, if you want some good tips on how to make uh, steel beams and stuff like that, then you should definitely check out my uh, tutorial. We, we have a basic steel production tutorial and most of you seem to have watched that one, but not a lot of you have watched my efficient steel uh, tutorial where we set up uh, like to, uh, using 270 steel ingots per minute setup. And that's basically something you should set up early in game because you see you need so much steel. So please go back in the, this little series and watch that tutorial and you will have exactly this. 45 steel beams per minute, 60 steel pipes per minute and uh, 15 encased industrial beams per minute. Now we only need to care about the steel beams but we got 45 and they're stocking up here. So we can leach from this uh, box uh, by that speed without having any issues. In general, it's better to leach before, like here, to take a connection and steal it from here. But we can steal a, um, uh, a steel beam. We, we can steal from our steel beams after the container too, but then we need to be so, 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 so careful that the production will be always higher than the consumption. So uh, that's why I write small signs here and there to just make sure that I keep track on how much uh, is getting used. And this little Mark I conveyor belt with the steel beams I of course prepared uh, for this particular project uh, that we're doing in this video. So we should just follow it along. Now oh, I kind of fell down a little bit. That's why I have ladders all over the place. It's so handy. Anyways. And I'm sorry for those of you who have said I shouldn't jump around so much, but you know, I have my, I have my Blade Runners on, and it's really, I don't know, it's, it's like a game bug. It's just so handy to jump around and slide jump and stuff like that, so it's hard to stop because that's just how we play the game. Anyways, here we have the uh, conveyor belt Mark I. So we're going to drag this down and insert it into this machine. And of course, now we're using, let's make sure here, 24 per minute. Uh, uh, we know that we produce 45, so we're absolutely safe. We shouldn't, of course, connect up more stuff to this uh, without thinking much. Now, I don't know exactly what's under here, but let's uh, open up a little a little uh, peeking hole here so we can see. 
Now, the optimal thing would be to ooh, steal from before we actually put it in the box. So this line is going straight into the box. And as long as we are stealing two per minute, it should still be an overflow that will fill up uh, the box. So then we just need a little, uh, a little splitter. Oh, and I apparently need some iron plates too. Let's go back to the basic tower. And there we go. So a splitter we should have, but even better is if we have a smart splitter because sometimes it might be the case that we just don't um, produce enough so that it's possible to evenly split them and that would make this facility to run um, less efficient when we don't have any um, when we have stolen uh, stuff from this container then this will run more it won't run very efficiently so what we're going to do left output will be set to overflow no uh, no sorry left output will be set to modular frames because we want to prioritize the uh, production of versatile framework and the forwards connection the center output that goes to the box will go to overflow so only when this machine can't use more than it's already using uh, it will be put into the box so it will always run efficiently all right, then I think we should drag down this line here and we can then connect it up. And now we can see that these are starting to leak into this system, which is absolutely fantastic. Now I will try to make this look half decent again. I think this looks absolutely acceptable. So it divides in here two per minute, 0 0.5 per minute should be going back to that box, which means we need to go to this sign and change this to 0 0.5 per minute. Otherwise, we'll be confused, you know? When we, when we leach something from a production line, we need to update the values at the end part, because otherwise we don't know the flow of materials. That's why we have signs in this game, to keep track of stuff. So we can see, 2 per minute, 24 steel beams per minute. Um, we'll just have to remember that in a steel container. But the sign we have for the steel container, that's actually going to uh, where we have... Uh, um, that's actually going before, to before it's getting put in the containers. So it's still true, it's the end portion you need to change. All right then, now we need to connect up this output somehow, and we're going to connect up this output to this. And I'm going to show you exactly what we're doing here. Here we have, for example, the automated wiring, and they are going to this mix track, automated wiring, and you may think rotors, automated wiring, concrete, what is going on? Well, if you haven't watched some earlier videos, I will go through this to you, and if you have, bear with me a little bit here. So, here we have a smart splitter. The left output, automated wiring, goes into the space elevator. You guessed it! And now it's going so slow that I'm not setting up a... Uh, we should actually set up... Uh, yeah, we should set up... Never mind, I'm sorry. We're going to do that in one second. But... Uh, that gets outputted there and on this little line we do have uh, here you can see here comes the smart plating and it goes into here to another little uh, splitter thing and one splitter goes into the box because that was earlier before I had smart splitters and uh, one portion goes into the sink and one portion goes into the uh, space elevator. And that's an earlier setup because I didn't have the smart splitter at that point. That should of course be changed. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this mixed line because you can see there are still space on this line, right? We're trying to put in a little merger here. We need to make sure we actually aim for the belt. And we know that when we can't turn it around and aim it somewhere else. Just gonna make sure we have the we stand in the right location here. 
I'm gonna look look straight at this area. You can see we can't we can't turn the merger anymore. That means it's set up. Then we can take this line and input it here. And now we can see our versatile frameworks is going into this line. So we can use this mixed line. It's gonna mix up together with uh, all this stuff, all our 60 concrete per minute, one of the first videos in this series. And we can run back here and here we have a smart splitter, how nice. Then we should add another smart splitter. And here we can see the front is overflow and the left is uh, and is automated wiring, which means that the left output will be prioritized. And we're gonna do the same. The left output will be versatile framework and the center output will be overflow. So then we can now I need to box in this little receiving bus because this looks absolutely horrible. But what, yeah, you can see here, you can see here, it works, but it looks terrible. It's absolutely atrocious. I'm sorry for doing it like that, but I'm going to close it in and it's going to look nice soon enough. But it works, it works. And it kind of looks okay because it kind of looks like they clip into each other in a way such as if they were combined. And there we go. Now we can connect up the these, basically, to this. And that should be all fine. We'll just need to wait a little bit for them to drop by here. Now we're going to add a smart splitter on both of these lines that are connecting it up here. I'm just going to see if I can get this to be one step above because this greatly disturbs me. Oh look, the automated, uh, the, the uh, versatile framework is coming in here in like a minute we can see if it actually is connected up and ready that's pretty cool that's pretty cool okay never mind i will continue you can see it doesn't look that bad it looks okay so uh it's going all right now good so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a smart splitter we're gonna add one somewhere on this line we're just gonna put them in some boxes. Now this box is a little bit close here. Now one there and we can have another smart splitter around there. So here we have them. They're going in this direction. They're going to tut, 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 which means that the left output will be overflow. And this one, the left output will be overflow. So basically we'll just slap down one box there and one box there we'll need to of course can drag a little conveyor left up there and a little other one up there and just connect them up there so whenever these are full we can actually check these values here overflow to the left good and the rest to the front which is of course only uh, the automated wiring, respectively, the versatile frameworks. Now I need to add some ladder ladders here, that's for sure. But here we can see that's oak also. Okay, they are both set up in the correct manner. That's awesome. And now you can see we have 17 versatile frameworks already in our little uh, container. So there we basically have it. We have solved the early stages of the games. Uh, space elevator parts and we'll just need to let it run here and whenever it gets fills up those containers well then it gonna sink in but before that they're gonna fill up the space elevator then the container then gonna sink in very handy we don't need to do any weird stuff we can just easily solve the early stages of the space elevator part like this so I do hope that this little setup and video did help you and if it did then you should definitely leave a like. And if you would like to support me doing all these videos well then you could become one of my commissioned officers on Patreon. And there are many levels there and 
Uh, also, any level of my patrons will get access to the world, this world, this very world which I'm building on and it's going to get updated uh, continuously. I'll update it uh, every time I uh, update my pack because I play some other games too and I, I've got some people following me for those games but I basically want to make sure that no matter the reason of anyone following the channel and wanting to support it there, there should also be an incentive to get something from being in one of the commissioned officer levels. So anyways, if you want to do that, that is of course awesome, but uh, just hanging around here, watching the videos, dropping me a like if you enjoyed it, is of course uh, making me super happy and making this entire series worth doing anyways. So I hope I'll see you in a future little video and uh, yeah, see you next time. This is your host Jim Odesim and we are signing out.